Testing, one, two, hello, hello. Okay, let's kind of get the music balance here. <clears throat> Bear with me, please. I tweaked some stuff since last time, and it's off a bit. I think that's a little bit better. Okay, so you have, this is, I just left this on here from last time. This is what a dried up slide looks like. It's completely desiccated. Looks like an aerial uh, photo of some landmass. Kind of interesting. I should bear with me, I have a duplicate audio path somewhere. Sometimes you open too many damn windows. That's not what I want. That's not what I want either. Where is that damn window? Not that one either. So, meanwhile, enjoy the music from GX3D while I get my uh, stuff together here. Just trying to find the duplicate window that's providing too much audio. So strange. I should have just closed all the browser windows since we already started, but such is life. We gotta make things harder on ourselves. <clears throat> Yeah, this is uh, an odd time, but I, I had a, little, a few moments. I thought, what the hell I'd do it. I have some samples that are going to go bad that I collected at the Palo Baylands local salt marsh. 
And I was feeling guilty because little critters in there aren't going to be happy sitting in the fridge for that long. So I do periodically open up the vials and aerate them, make sure the water is okay. But uh, got to treat them a little bit better than that, otherwise they won't be around to put on a nice show for everybody. So I decided to do it now. Not as long as the usual, like, four-hour show, but somewhat of a show. I could just find my... There's my dropper here. Make a fresh slide. I always get really good samples from that part of the Bayland, so I'm pretty excited, actually, by what should be in here. So... Fingers crossed. Let's see what we get. So my cover slips are clean enough. Looks like they are. Sometimes they come out of the box cloudy. i got to clean them again. Okay. Let's see what we got. Yeah. Oh, man, there's all kinds of stuff in here. All kinds of goodies in here. Looks like some Euglena flipping around. Let's take a look-see. Yeah, got some nice Euglena. It's one of these weird, uh, if you guys don't know Euglena, it's one of these animal-plant hybrid thingies. It's an animal with chlorophyll. So it can... It can feed or it can make its own food from the sun. Very cool. Let me cheat and do a little digital zoom just because. Actually, you know what? It's a little bit choppy on the. Let me change my camera setting real quick. Live. Actually, no, that's okay. Just an exposure issue, I think. Exposure a tiny bit. Oh, nice. There's a Euplodes cruising by there. Looks like. Got the little spiky Siri uh, sticking on the top and bottom. But it's swimming a little too fast. Let's go to one of these Euglena. They're quite slow. You can see the red eye spot there. Let me... Uh, do another digital zoom here to cheat a bit. Let's make sure I'm in the middle of the frame so I'm not confused with what I see versus the camera. And let's... There's a Euglena right there, a Euglena right there. I might put a little too much water on the slide so there. They've got a little extra leeway. Let's try dark field for a bit so you get some colors and some contrast. There's a whole bunch of Euglena there. A little more digital zoom because I don't want to change objectives yet. Very nice. So you can see by the wiggly movement, they're flagellates. Big old flagellum out the back. Red eye spot because they need to have an eye spot to know where the light levels are since they need to have light to make the chlorophyll do its business, make some food. And let's get the hand out of there. That's messing things up. Let's go a little more digital zoom. I think it will handle it. So yeah, a whole bunch of Euglena cruising around in here. 
amongst the debris. Even if you're just chilling out so I can get a little closer to them. Let's try bumping it and see what I get. There's a nice close up of one. You can see the red eye spot there, it's kind of orangey red. See the flagellum whipping around to the left there, making little swirly patterns. Let's fix the uh, contrast here a little bit. Very nice. This one tends to whip. It's a long flagellum. It flip, whips around in all directions, but sometimes you have to defocus to see the flagellum. Not on these guys. Very nice. I love when they are active, but not actively swimming, so you can still kind of stare at them for a while and study them. Let's make sure I'm in the center still. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay. Hey, Paul, what's up? Yeah. So there's a Euglena just chilling. There's an active one cruising by. A little bit bigger. There's one that's also just hanging out, but you can clearly see that eye spot. If I focus it correctly there. Kind of orangey-red eye spot. And here are a few just hanging out by this cluster of junk. Again, long flagellum whipping around. You can see that. A little more light, maybe. There's all kinds of stuff cruising by. <laughs> a little more contrasty there. You can see the detail on the edge a little bit there, sharper lines. So yeah, sometimes you can just hang out in one spot and things go floating by, which is a nice comfy way to do it. And you glean are interesting because they um, can change your shape drastically. They seem to be a little more gelatinous in the way they move than a lot of other protozoans at this at this scale. Paramecium are pretty rigid. They can bend and flex a bit, but they don't squish like these guys do. Um, and see, this one's got a nice point on the back. Sometimes they can straighten out and be a nice, long, tapered cell, and other times they get all kind of squishy and bulged up like this one here. So they're quite malleable. Oh, this one's really cool, rotating. I wish, unfortunately, the eyepiece looks so much better than the uh, the camera. I need to get my, I've, I misplaced my DSLR adapter so I can get better images with the DSLR. Hey, Matt, what's up? <clears throat> I'll see you ahead. Um, so, if I can get one to stay in focus as it's cruising by and tumbling, you can really see the 3D you can basically see like the chloroplast inside tumbling around inside like a tombola. One of those things they use for um, lotteries and stuff with the balls inside. It's really cool. Find a spot and just hopefully they tumble in focus and just stay here for a bit as they swim by. These guys are all out of focus. There you go. See, it pops in and out. This, I put a little extra water on the slide by accident, so they have too much Z to move in. So the depth of field is so shallow at this magnification, it's really hard to uh, to maintain the focus. But look at them twirling as they cruise by. That's so cool. There you can see the chloroplast on that one as it rolls. There's a lot of 3D structure there. Nice sub. Uh, JX3's music is perfect here as I'm uh, inspecting the structure of the uh, Euglena. This is very uh, inquisitive music. Very cool. Wow, there are a whole bunch of them right here. Why do they like this spot so much? It's crazy. Never seen so many glean on one slide ever. 
picked a really, if you uh, saw me on Kent's uh, pub the other day walking around there, um, I collected some samples before I left, and one of the mucky pools I showed in the beginning was where I got some of those goodies. It's just very, very rich. Let's go up here. Oh, they're really hanging out. There's one just hanging out with all the structures there. Really nice. So occasionally you get lucky, they'll just park, maybe twist around in place, and the focus will stay the same. I can zoom out real quick and you can see how many there are in this little area. There are tons. Oh, not too far out. So this is where I can be lazy, just kind of hang out and watch. It's like bird watching, the birds come to you. Oh, you got a DP4, nice. Welcome to the club. I need to use my DP4 more. I have a DP4 Plus actually wired into my master rack, my master mixer. But since I've had some wiring issues lately with noise and stuff, I haven't turned everything on because it's, I need to do some deoxid WD-40, whatever the hell it is, to uh, make things a little nicer. So that's a pretty good little spot. I'm tempted just to stay here, but I know there's more goodies on the slide. If I saw this much immediately, let's go travel around a bit. Oh, look at all these. Wow. All kinds of little guys going crazy here. There's some diatoms, some kind of boxy diatoms, a couple uh, tapered diatoms there. These are just the shells at this point because most of the internal stuff is gone. You see the colors mostly gone out of it. So the silica shells left behind. Ah, there's one of those little, uh, I think that's a Euplodes right there, cruising or bouncing around like a pinball. Very cool. I have at least one or two videos of these guys uh, expiring and exploding. <laughs> their contractile vacuoles stop working and they pop. Oh, look at that little guy. I haven't seen one of those before. That little sphere with the dots on the outside. Whoa, there goes a nematode. Just destroyed the whole scene. Like I said, very busy slide. Look at that little dude there. I have no idea what that is. Should get a clear shot, but I don't want to go to oil yet. Because once you go to oil, you can't really go back and use other objectives because you risk putting them in the oil and destroying them. This particular one is a replacement uh, objective that I did put in oil at one point. And th the numerical aperture is not 100% the same. So I have a lot more focus issues with this one over the original that was here. So I have to go find out why that is. But for now, it does work. I'm getting some good images out of it. It's just very finicky with the, the focus. So yeah, there are a couple of those little spiky, or not spiky, but little uh, guys with the dots on the uh, on the cell membrane there. Interesting. There's that Euglena slowly whipping its flagellum there. It's a little hair-like thing whipping around, curling up. Shot of the ice spot and the flagellum there whipping around. I have to constantly focus up and down. The Z is just too, way too thick at this magnification. Another reason why I didn't go to oil. This oil is just thousand uh, power, and it's really, really, really shallow depth of field. I like these little guys here. They're not chlorella, but there are some. Probably maybe they are a type of chlorella. Small with some some greenish pigment into single cell plants of some kind but this guy I'm baffled by this little guy here I'll have to look that one up so nice let's go back a level because that's too much power and I've got a little bit of oblique lighting so you get some 3d 
qualities here. There's some oblique lighting for you. Those guys get all beaten up by that nematode. Look at that. It's going bonkers. You guys have seen nematodes before on my stream, so I'm not going to hang out too much with the nematode. Yeah, those might be chlorella. Very small. All right, let's do a quick scan of the periphery. See what else I'm missing here. Looking for uh, Vorticella. I can find some. Or an amoeba, possibly. Mm, nice. More Euglena, just everywhere. Some free swimming Euglena. Sparkling, like a little gem. But let's keep moving in and out of focus. You see that <clears throat> kind of wiggle, woggle motion? That's the flagellum. Makes them woggle back and forth and, and rotate. So, dead giveaway. It's not a ciliate, it's definitely a flagellate. Uh, what else we got here? There's that field I was in before with all these guys. There's an interesting structure there. Look at that squiggly thing. I haven't seen one of those before either. There's nematode again. There's another nematode going crazy. Zoom out a tad because I'm a little too close. Nematode just banging up all those poor Euglena. More diatom shells everywhere. There's a Vorticella. And it's moving. It's pumping. See, it looks like a little upside down wine glass. That's a Vorticella. And they have this little crown of cilia that beat at the top of the wine glass, bringing in food. So they basically filter feed, just like, um, although they're single celled on a stalk, they, they filter feed just like a clam or a mussel would do. And they're interesting because that stalk, when they get annoyed from something, could be any number of stimuli they will retract in protection and that little stalk forms a little helix it goes just pulls in like a spring and then slowly relaxes to let them go out to the full length but you see all the stuff flying by that's not swimming there's some little particles to change the light level sometimes to really see the particles but um any little fragments flying around are all caused by them, little current they're creating. Everything else is free swimming in the area. But you can see this movement inside the cell because they're actively moving those cilia. Very cool, I love Vorticella. They often get them in a little colony like four or five or more in a little cluster, just attached to debris like this, just hanging out there. Hey Rob, how's it going? So yeah, love me some Vorticella. I have a video from maybe a year ago. There's one in particular, just pumping away with the cilia. And it's creating a, I'll simulate with a hand here. It's creating this little vortex going whoosh, 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 and stuff is bouncing off of it because it's too big. And it's creating this little vortex around it, it's hilarious.
Oh, I guess you can't see my hand on here. I oh, know you can. I have to click the window. Yeah, so the vortex is swimming like that. And the, it, because they mostly eat like bacteria and very, very, very small protists, um, you're not seeing a lot of their food unless it's like a cloud of stuff or them. Contrast it just right. So it was really cool to just see diatoms and other stuff kind of in the area bouncing off of it with this vortex created by it. It's a really strong vortex. Hence the name Vorticella. Oh, look at this little guy down here. That looks like a chlorella. Nice green color. Flagellated. So, single cell plant. There's a diatom right there. Almost like a little mini navicula. Actually, a few of them there. Looks like little battleships. Parked. Contrast better there. And some kind of going in a circle. And nice Euglena taking a break. Flagellum is slow. Actually, a few Euglena here. Some are balled up. Probably not too happy. Well, this one is still going to town. And it's leaving. Like South Park. And it's gone. Let's go back to the uh, Vorticella. Love these guys. One of these days I'll put my face contrast optics on here. So this stuff will really pop. I keep forgetting to do it. And it's, it's kind of a, a chore because you have to change the objectives. You have to change the um, stuff for the condenser. And so it's not a, it's not a two minute operation. And once you install it, you're stuck with face contrast until you undo all that. And some things just don't look good in face contrast. Oh, there's a really nice tapered diatom there. Very delicate. See the long pointy ends right there moving. In and out of the debris. Really nice. A couple other diatom shells in the area. Alright. There's one of these little guys again, just hanging out. Chloroplast galore. down here. Ooh, we got something bigger in here. What is that? Is that another Euglena? I see Euglena's on the periphery. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's one of these guys. I haven't seen one of these guys for a while. I think this is Amphileptus, maybe? Very nice. It's like a bowling pin shape. I think it's Amphileptus, but I have to double check. And it's in and out. And it's so fast. It's like the hardest video game in the world to stay focused, stay centered, all at the same time. You guys are going to get dizzy watching this, so. Let me go um, out a level. Change it to uh, Dark Field. And see if I can track him now. So you can see it in the middle of the frame there, in and out of focus. Let me change the light levels a bit here. Now it's in the middle. But again, in and out of focus because it's a very hard thing to... They have too much uh, up and down movement in this much water. So I gave myself too much work to do here. So you can see how fast they are. They're really hard to follow. There's a nice nematode. Let's just hang on that for a bit. Well, it has its little fit. Get those longitudinal muscles going crazy. <laughs> but this behavior, as crazy as it looks, 
When you see them in a pile of debris, it totally makes sense. This wiggling motion allows them to tunnel through debris very easily because they're tapered and they're slippery and they can just wiggle right through fields of debris whereas an animal would often be blocked if they're too bulbous or too um, blunt shaped just trying to power on through so this motion really works for them I made it better they've been around a hell of a lot longer than a lot of other eukaryotes so So they just just bat the hell out of everything around them. They're so big. So of course they're multicellular. Um, rotifers and tardigrades are around a thousand cells. I forgot how many cells in a nematode. Probably about a thousand as well. Maybe a little more. Not a lot. Here's a slower one. You can see inside the gut there. If it stops a little bit. Yeah, the nematode's dancing on the beat, right? <laughs> it's the nematode dance party. Come join the fun. Zoom out a tad. You can see a couple at once here. Where did they go? I had two next to each other. Kind of reminds me of the guy wiggling the recent uh, video that's gone all over Facebook of the guy um, playing noise music with a balaclava on, dancing like a fool. It's like a nematode dance. All right, let's go elsewhere. We've seen a lot of this stuff already. Another nematode. This one's more mellow, but still a little bit crazy. There's a really nice structure there. Not sure what that is. It's very egg like, but hard to say. Another one to look up. A lot of structure. I'm not seeing any cilia beating on it. Certainly has no flagellum of any kind. So it could be a resting structure of something like a cyst or an egg. But man, those uh, Euclina seem to like it. They're really hanging out there. So see, I have to focus. The Euglena are actually above it. I have to focus on them, and then that gets out of focus. Now I'm back in focus there. But Euglena are fun. They look a little ghosts. They have this little tapered body like ghosts in video games and stuff. The little green ghosts. See if I can get a little oblique, a little more oblique lighting on it to make it pop. Let's go full on dark field. Dark field looks great. Hope Henrik gets a chance to watch this. His music really fits the mood. Uh, more entangled. <laughs> the nematode is having fun. See how it slithers through material so easily? This is a perfect little example of that. Oh, and it just knocked a Euplodes loose. Ah! <laughs> All right. There's a little dude spinning like crazy. I love when you see these guys just spinning like maniacs. Always entertaining. Little mini flagellates going bonkers. So we got here. I see the edge of the slide is starting to dry up. See the salt crystals are starting to form. So 
Oh. Nice. There's another Vorticella on a little tiny piece of debris. And it's right next to a Euplodes, it looks like. Or is that a... Is it a Euplodes or a Stylonchia? Let me get a little closer here. Actually, that's close enough. Just fix the focus. So there's uh, the stalk of the Vorticella attached to a little piece of debris. I've seen it free swimming. They can, through one reason or another, come off the stalk. Either it breaks or they move somewhere else. And uh, but they're generally attached with a stock of some kind, and then this little dude next to it. So you can get an idea there. It's also a single-celled uh, animal, just like the one with the cilia right next to it, beating like crazy. But what's cool is you can see. Let me change this a little bit to some oblique lighting a tad. You can see it. This one is more spiky. Let me go back in a little closer. See the long cilia that bunch up into a bundles called Siri, C I R R I. They're real distinct. And in some of these animals that have the Siri, like Euplodes, they can actually walk on them like legs. I've seen a walk on the surface of algae, like it's a little beetle even though it's a single-celled animal. It's just bizarre. So they usually have the Siri at the at the poles, so the, basically the top and bottom of the cell. And the rest of the cell is just normal cilia. This one has some nice striations on it too. And some structures inside. So it's small enough to be Euplodes. They usually have more of a uh, concave side when they rotate. I haven't seen it rotate yet. Stylonk is usually longer, tapered looking. And now it's going to interact with this guy, see if it retracts. Oh, it's not going to like that. But it's also beating all the Siri. You'll see stuff flying by, little particles flying by, because it's, it's creating a, a vortex as well. fun pretty fun <clears throat> oops move that over a little bit so I'm missing some of the chat here dude where's my stock exactly yeah I've seen them free swimming uh, and I wasn't sure if something happened to them but they were on their move but that you, you can't mistake this body shape even when they don't have a stock it looks very distinct Compared to other ciliates. So you know it's a, a Vorticella that's just lost its stock. But yeah, these, these are cool. I like these guys a lot. That's a nice little combo shot. Two of my favorites. Get a little dark field action, oblique lining. So that you can see a little more activity inside the Vorticella. I think I'm digitally zoomed a little too much. I'm losing some sharpness. And here comes another little guy to join the party. So we got Euglena on the upper left. Another little visitor here I'm not familiar with, some kind of little flagellate. Um, and the two guys in the middle. It's quite a nice little gathering. But oblique lighting's great, you really get this 3D pop. The only thing better than this is the uh, the $5,000 and up. Um, oh, there's a little particle flying by. See the vortex he created? Just It did like a little uh, gravitational assist going around it. Um, this is a microscope technology called differential interference um, contrast, and uh, DIC for short. And they start at like five thousand dollars. I'd love to get one of those because you, it makes this look like crap. As cool as this looks, DIC just makes the images pop more 3D. You also have this rotating prism 
to give you like nice background colors artificially, but aesthetically pleasing. You can do that with, uh, I've done it on previous streams with uh, color filters on my filter holder. It's called Reinberg Illumination, where you, you change the background color. There's a little retraction. See that? I think you floaties bothered it. And it's like, no. Sometimes it gets a kink, and sometimes it's a perfect little helix, like a nice little sp coiled spring shape. Um, it's like tickling it. It's like, <laughs> am I, I'm not touching you. Am I bugging you? I'm not touching you like little kids do. But anyway, um, DIC is superior. And then you get into a fluorescence microscopy where you can make stuff glow with certain kind of light conditions. And it's really good stuff, but man, it's a lot of money. It's amazing what you can do with a pretty standard compound microscope like this one. And um, some knowledge of, of how the light works and how the um, using patch stops and other tricks, colored filters um, on the... Um, above the condenser or below the condenser and um, stuff I wish I had known back in college not even the lab techs and the people who work with this stuff all the time knew these little tricks the teachers didn't know it nobody knew it. it took me like over 20 years to find out some of these tricks one video on YouTube by a guy in Germany who's really good who I watch regularly um, had all these cool tips and trick videos on my you gotta be kidding me this stuff should have been common knowledge with anyone who knows anything about microscopes but you know you'd be shocked just like anything else whether it's synthesizers guitars microscopes they have a lot of knowledge out there that's really not known by you know a lot of people collectively there's a lot but not usually by a handful of people that don't know that much to be honest so you rely on those people to give you those tips and tricks and now I'm able to do all this stuff without buying a super crazy scope. Although I still want one. Because they are superior. They're just a lot of money. Here's a Glena again coming through. We bumped off that guy. There's more little guys swimming through. So you can see the spiky stuff. Whether it's swimming or just sitting there. Pumping away. All these guys bumping into them. So let me... Back off, there's you glean on the right side again. Back off a little bit and do a little more searching before the slide dries up. There's some nice debris of something that broke down. I always make sure to collect some what is uh, known as pond. Oh, another. Oh, look at that. Guy. I've seen one of these before too and I forgot which one this is. Look at that. Beautiful. Oh, it's a nice coiled. Sometimes they do this. You get a, the uh, nematodes coiling up like this. But you can really see the structure inside. Look at the, all the details. When they stop moving for a bit, you can really see some details. Nice little coil. Make a pretzel. Get that hand out of there. My hand is ruining my shot. Nice, uh, peaceful music for uh, nematode yoga. So they just squeeze through material effortlessly. Oops, not too fast. So their, their body motion really suits them for going through all this muck. And they can just turn quickly and go a different direction. So when they're slow and controlled like this, you totally understand it. When they're all flapping around all crazy like that, you just think they're having a tantrum. And that looks like a stylonchia there. So the longer capsule shaped body and those little Siri on the ends those are nice let me zoom in a tad because I don't want to change objectives yet 
might lose some of my clarity, but you can see it a little bit better. So there's all kinds of goodness going on inside there. It's a very sparkly looking active cell. Now that it's stable, let me go back a bit and try another objective. It's worth the risk. There it is. So see the spikes? Like the other one, but it's a longer body plan and it's a bigger cell. Otherwise, it looks kind of like the other one. It doesn't have those striations like the other one did. But uh, I like these guys a lot. They're usually, This one's nicely slow, going in circles, but usually they're quite active. You're going to chase them around. Occasionally, I have to back off here a little bit because I'm too close digitally. There you go. This is a great track by Henrik. I like this one a lot. A little choir stuff in here. Get in there. Come on. It's got this really jerky motion, too. I've seen this, this, this species do this a lot. It's a weird jerky motion while it's turning. It's like it's unsure. So kind of like the Vorticella backs off but on a coil. This one keeps like exploring, but it's timid a little bit. It backs off. So you get this weird jerky motion while it's rotating. Another diagnostic I've noticed on these guys. Yeah, come on. There we go. XY stage is a little stiff for these fine details. It's, it takes some extra finesse to get a smooth XY motion at a high magnification. And I'm going to zoom out digitally. I think I'm turning too much. And I can kind of follow. Oh, there's that big dude cruising by. Whoa, yeah. I wanted to follow it a little bit, but now I'll follow it now. Look at all those contractile, those food vacuoles inside there. It's been a busy boy eating a bunch of stuff. So since they're single cells, they have to uh, do this thing called endocytosis, where they bring in, they actually envelop part of their cell membrane. Ooh, look at that little guy, too. That is a little um, larval. That's a... Um, Larval stage of uh, the um, copepod. So he's got the eye spot and the little tiny buds. You're going to find all kinds of stuff on this slide. It's a great slide. So this larval stage of the copepod. You see it much bigger on my other streams where it's got these. It's like a like a micro shrimp basically. It's in the same group as uh, the crustaceans, and uh, it's got the eye spot. It's got these little limbs, but the larval stage looks like this. I think it's called a nauplius larva. I have to double check that. And there's a cool undulating. Oh, that guy doing his little dance there. And he's back. Yay. I'm going to follow this guy for a little bit. So I, I forgot what species this is or even what uh, what family this is. But these are really nice because they eat a bunch of debris. You get really nice insight into the structure. Those, the food vacuoles all have different colors and sizes. So endocytosis, they take in fluid or they take in um, prey, form a little um, vacuole around it, essentially like a micro stomach. A digestive enzymes get dumped in there from the cellular machinery. And then when it's noticed it's had enough time, however the hell that works, it basically goes back to the end of the edge of the cell and joins with the membrane and, and basically craps it out. And I have some footage of that on one of my streams. It's kind of fun to see it basically uh, excrete its contents into the, the space around it. Ooh, look at all those guys, too. Man, there's all kinds of stuff on this. See what I mean? You never know what you're going to find. Look at 
that. And uh, anyway, so you, it's, it's analogous to, uh, to the way, you know, we eat, we, the, the food goes in our stomach and we process it and dump it out. We just don't make little vesicles. We just have a alimentary canal that handles all the processing. But even on a, on a, on a single cell level, it's got a pretty complex mechanism to make that work. Because inside the cell, it's just a giant factory, right? You have um, uh, proteins and other things being built from amino acids, and packaged uh, in the endoplasmic reticulum with the ribosomes. And if you go watch some videos of the animation of how it works, it's it's pretty insane. With the 3D folding of molecules to make these complex blobby shapes, and they become like zippers. For molecules. Let me uh, go back out. I just lost that guy. So you get pretty complicated actions inside of a cell. Whether it's going into the nucleus or whether it's going to other parts of the cell or, or being processed to release into the body. Wow, look at that. That's crazy. I have no idea what that is. Look at all that. There's another ciliate of some kind. Much smaller than a paramecium, but it has a similar shape to it. But it's a flagellate. See the little flagellum there? And these guys are very interesting. All clustered together like this. So this looks like, um, oh, yeah, look at it, it's, like, it's stuff's coming out. So it looks like this ruptured. This is some kind of a, a, a fruiting body of something. And it's ruptured and all the contents are coming out. It's like a spore of some kind. But it's ruptured and all these little guys are oozing out. Little banana shaped thing. See that little tip there? It's like a bulbous tip, like the top of a banana. Interesting. Never seen this before. Just some uh, plant structure. Oh, there's that guy again. Oh, he's gone. And there's some there's these cool diatoms on this side. You can really see the rafe. That's the, uh, looks like um, stitching almost. Kind of parallel lines. On a, on a long line, almost like a comb. Let's go a little closer here. And the Rafe, supposedly, is used in their locomotion. How they uh, exude this kind of uh, mucilage to help them swim. But last article I read on that was kind of suspect. I think they're still trying to figure out that whole thing. But I'm just, I'm behind on some of the literature and that stuff. Definitely wasn't understood very well about 20 years ago when I was starting to look into this stuff a lot. And, or more than 20 years ago. But uh, I'll have to do some more reading about it. But yeah, that's that little, um, looks like a comb, almost. A little te short teeth on a comb along a long line. And it's like little slits in the uh, the test, which is the, the name for the the shell or casing of the diatom. It's basically uh, silica, silicon dioxide, basically glass. And so if you uh, read the ingredients of your, um, some types of um, abrasive cleaning materials, anything that has this white powdery stuff in it that's abrasive, it's diatomaceous earth. So it's millions of these little dry, um uh, crushed diatom shells. Uh, it's often used as a, a pool filter ingredient. I'm not sure about modern pool filters. When I was a kid, we had big bags of diatomaceous earth we had to put 
in the pool as part of the filtration system. And when it goes bad, you throw it out and get another batch. But really good filtration medium. But it's also an abrasive, used for different cleaning products and more good Euglena shots there. Uh, I saw some water movement, which means the slide is starting to dry out, I think. I'm getting some pulsating. There's another cool flagellate there. You can see it's got a long flagellum curling near the top. with the uh, contrast a bit let's see a little bit better this one has some interesting um, striations going down the long end of the cell a little diatom above it here Glena, this one's all balled up. Probably not doing so well. Uh, what else we got? Well, the slide dries out. Yeah, there's another little larva. Copepod larva. So it has the... Um, more of the natural color there so you see the the guts are moving around in there it's got the red eye spot which is really nice and the limbs there with little bristles on them which will eventually grow quite long but you see all the all the guts pulsating in there you'll often find these guys where the guts aren't moving because they just died and if you watch long enough they will eventually rupture through uh, osmotic pressure and then um, there's a bacteria join around them and it's a big old party. Music is low? Oh, sorry. Turn it up a little bit. Sounded fine when I first did a thing, but I think some of the tracks may be lower. I don't know. I won't, sorry, I wasn't paying attention. I purposely had the low, music low on my headphones because I don't want to be too distracted while I'm trying to chat about all this crap. Anyway, so that's the larva doing its thing. Nice uh, filamentous algae there, moving. The colonial algae, it's, the, it's probably a um, cyanobacterium, so more related to bacteria than it is to plants. Blue-green algae, making these long colorless threads. Diatoms. Ooh, there's a whole cluster of diatoms. Look at that. It's kind of fun how they'll do that. They'll kind of bunch around some debris and make this spoke design. Nice little spoke design there. And you can see those little ridges going down the, uh, the shells like I was talking about. The rafe. Gleaner everywhere still. Yeah, let's go through a few more things. I'm going to make another slide. That's a really good slide. More debris of some kind. Single diatom there. Nice little flagellate there. That's cool. 
That looks actually like a radiolarian. No, um, what do you call it? Um, uh, you can see that 3D structure. That's really cool. Looks like, um, damn it. Sorry, I tip my tongue. Dinoflagellate. This looks like a dinoflagellate. If you focus through, it's got some 3D structure. Like a little waist. And it has uh, flagella. See how it rotates? It has that little waist to it. I found one of these in the San Francisco Bay before, but. And now I found another one at the, at the Baylands. Look at that. Looks like almost like a coffee bean at this angle. See it rotate? These are the guys that cause red tide. So, if you're concerned about eating shellfish or bivalves, this is a little bugger you're worried about. Because it will mess you up. They make these nasty toxins that build up in the animals that you eat. And they're really cool, though, because they have this different color to kind of a golden green yellow color and see that little little channel right there a little waist with uh, flagellum going around it that is a dinoflagellate I've only gotten one on on the show before that was when I collected at uh, Sausalito or Tiburon one of those it's right next to each other on the bay in a water sample I had, but this is cool to find one at the Baylands. But there, yeah, see as it rotates, it's got that, um, it's like a, a ball with a little constriction around the center, and it's flagella in there sw floating around. So you get that 3D structure to it. It was like a little spaceship. Very nice. That also is probably a good excuse to go oil. So I don't really have any shots of these guys that I liked. Let's see if I have any oil left in here. Just do a little oil immersion on this guy. Hopefully it doesn't shift when I move it over. Sometimes, there we go. Now it's much closer. Now we're at a thousand power. Carefully, see how it rotates. Oh, now it's going to take off right when I'm getting a close view of it. Decides to leave. There we go. Nope. No, don't leave. Well, you got a little view of the uh, the waste. I'm going to try to find it with a slightly lower power and then rotate back on the oil. I've got to be careful with this because I don't want to put a good eyepiece in the oil. Very, very bad. A little bugger decided to move. Where did you go? Where did you go? Where did you go? Could have gone anywhere. Is that it right there? Ha, ah, look, I found you. You're over here now. Gotcha. Thought you could get away. So... It also has an eye spot right there. And you can see the all the contents inside there. There's a euglena for scale right next to it, all balled up. Still moving its parts, but all balled up for some reason. Yeah. Now I got really narrow depth of field. 
but so cool to get close to one of these guys. You don't see them very often. See, there's a flagellum sticking out on the right. You didn't bother by this. There's the constriction. If I focus through the constriction, you'll see. Pretty cool. But yeah, these these are uh, these are the bad guys that make you sick and can kill you in mass numbers inside your shellfish. So when you see red tide warning, it's a whole bunch of these guys. So they're kind of a yellowish color, yellow orange, and in mass numbers in the ocean, they look kind of reddish. The light hits it just right. I believe they can be more red than this too. But uh, yeah, pretty cool stuff. Why is it not? I'm getting as much light as this as I want to get out of it. There we go. Much better. I can also crank this up a tad in the software. the contrast. I get too much light and then it gets all flat looking. So yeah, there you go. Dinoflagellate. And you can see the flagella. So there's the flage flagellate part. I forgot what dino is. Um, might be because they have two flag flagella. I can't remember. But they're interesting because they have this the flagella come out of this waist structure, this little groove they have. It's like it's like a giant Death Star trench around the middle of the uh, the ball of of the shell, essentially. And I think they I can't remember these guys up there. There were other ones that are mentioned along with these when you talk about uh, interesting shapes and stuff as, you know, radiolarians and foraminiferans and all this kind of stuff. Um, they have calcium carbonate shells, but these guys are way too transparent to have much calcium carbonate. They might have a little bit to give them that shape. I have to read up on these guys. I forgot. Since I never see them except for once before, I don't remember that much about them other than the fact that they are nuisances to folks that like to eat the stuff that feed on them. But they are cool little structures. So I'm seeing a flagellum off to the right and then there's this kind of a wavy fuzzy thing on the upper margin. You probably better see it there pulsating. That's another flagellum coming out of that groove. So it allows them to basically tumble. Unlike um, Euglena, they have this kind of whipping motion, making them move a little bit like a nematode. They, uh, these guys can rotate like when you throw a ball, it rotates in space and spin with uh, flagella on different axes. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. How's the music? Is it still too low? Or I'll turn up some more if you want. The reason it was at a certain level is I had turned it down when I first started because it was um, almost at the same level as my voice and the quick test I did. And guy you can kind of see the edge of the groove there as I focus it's the groove is basically um, perpendicular to the view I have right now the groove is basically going 
like this. So I can't really see it. You'd have to turn on its side and be more parallel so I can actually see it. But yeah, only the second one I've ever found. And they're out there, obviously. You get red tide, they're all over the damn place, but no red tide right now, so I'm lucky to find one. Here's that waving flagellum at the top. Almost looks like heat coming off of it, but it's it's a slowly undulating flagellum. Oh, are we gonna get the groove turn a little bit? Hey Dave, what's up? Yeah, you can almost make out the groove focusing through it because it is transparent. Quite getting it, but I like the ice spot. That's a cool look. Notice how it's a similar color to the one in the uh, copepod larva. It's probably similar pigments, to be honest. Na nature will often come up with unusual pigments here and there, but it often has a lot of the same stuff all over the place. Why reinvent the wheel when one works? Cool. Well, I'm happy about that. Let's change the view a little bit more. So we can eke out a little bit more detail. There you can see the undulating flagellum a little bit there. on the left side of the uh, of the cell. So they're interesting looking um, just because you know, most fl flagellates, some flagellates have uh, something like uh, um, chlamydia, sorry, not chlamydia, <laughs> chlamydomonas is a little uh, single celled algae that has paired flagella at the back. And you'll see, you know, it swim appropriately based on that shape. But this one, because it has flagella at different angles, it just swims differently and looks differently when you, when you look at it under a scope. So, change this a little bit. Pretty cool. I'm happy. Hope you guys liked that. It was pretty special, actually. One last look, because this slide is going to dry. So what else I could find? This is normal uh, bright field or white field view. Nothing special. No oblique lighting. No dark field. The way I looked at most stuff for years before I knew any better. <laughs> Ah, uh, clusters of diatoms. Look at that. Spiky structure sticking out of all the debris. More euglena. Not much else. There's some nice crystals. Look at that. You get some uh, polarization effects there. Some colors coming off the crystals at different angles. That's another trick I need to do in a future stream using a polarized light with crystals. Right now I'm getting it because they're growing at different angles, so it's kind of doing it for me. But you can encourage this with uh, proper polarized filters in the scope in a certain way. It's a trick you can do. But look at that. It's almost like a turkey tail fungus there, that kind of banding, radial banding. Really cool. And you get in some weird color artifacts from the polarized light. Pretty cool stuff. Yeah, it's all getting all crusty on the edges here. As the slide is drying up, lots of salts. Again, it looks like topographical maps uh, or aerial photos of, of land masses from high altitude. More of those 
those little structures. Yeah, not finding much else. I've done a whole sweep of the slide pretty much. Lots of debris, lots of diatoms, and these fun little radial arrangements. All right. Man, I wonder what the next slide's going to look like. That was crazy. Time to make another. Um, let's do one from the other side where the mud was. I got some nice mucky, mucky muck from the other side of the levee I was on. Um, where's my other eyedropper? I don't want to cross-contaminate because I like to keep the specimens separate from where they were collected. Come on, eyedropper. Where'd you go? I had a few extra ones here I needed to sort out. Mm. Hmm. I also have a really nice um, kind of research grade pipette man thing I was going to start using for, for dispensing the exact amount of drop that I needed. I just haven't unpackaged it and, and played with it yet. They used to be like $200 when I was taking these classes a long time ago. And now you can get them for like you know 20, 25 bucks or whatever on Amazon. Damn it, I can't find my other eyedropper. Hold on a second. I might have one over here. In this pile of stuff. It's my slide pile I need to clean still. Hmm. Well, damn it. It's not there, so I'll risk cross contaminating. It's okay. I can only find one pipette right now. So, let me get this, uh, one second, put the headphones down. try it now. I was able to flush it a little bit with some fresh water so it's not contaminated from the other sample. This one's a little darker because it has some suspended very fine mud in it. And I've often got some amazing samples from this section of the waterway. Might be a little too dark though. Let's see. Should be little things swimming through it. There you go, a little nematode doing its business in the muck. Let's go. Some diatoms in here. Is I got lots of stuff in here, but it's obscured by lots of particles. Lots of diatoms, lots of little things swimming around. But it's like looking through a thick forest at birds. Lots of obscured goodness. But 
There's something down here. What's that? It's like a diatom moving through there. Yeah, diatoms going through the muck. It's fun to watch these guys. You imagine single cell plants swimming around doing their thing. Pretty crazy. A couple different types of diatoms. Long tapered ones. Little cigar like ones. Here's a big one. These are really nice ones in the area. Very beautiful. Just getting a lot of uh, blockage from the debris. But you can see the colors very clearly. And the long tapered ends that are kind of bent in different directions. I forgot what kind this is, but they're really cool. Some of the biggest diatoms in the area. Let's see how they have to navigate through all this muck. Which is basically what they're doing in the mud, right? They're just either on top of the mud or in the mud, navigating to get to a spot where they can get to the light. It's a nice view of one right there. their existence in that mud. I'm going to find a clear spot. Like little submarines. There's some more over here. I'll just quickly jump around here. It's it actually is pretty mucky. I should have made it a little thinner. So I'll just go through a couple things and I'll change. I'm just looking for things that aren't diet times at this point. A lot of diet times. This is a like a submarine movie. Run silent, run deep. <laughs> Going through the muck, flying blind. More diet times. There's a big blocky diatom with blunt ends. These are fairly common too, really big. And then a smaller one next to that. So you see these quite a lot. So far, not much else. It's just so cloudy with debris. So I'll make another one. That was way too mucky muck. Way too opaque. Last time I went through this mud, I actually got some really cool. There's a video I haven't had a chance to upload yet. I was going to edit it because it was way too long um, that I shot during some explorations after I sampled. And um, it's uh, really interesting. It's like one of the largest ciliates you can find. That down. I also have a video I found I shot on my old setup with an iPhone bolted to the eyepiece of um, this is a little less silty but still kind of silty we'll see of a, a really cool um, huge diatom colonial diatom that I will post later on um, it was actually a damaged video file. I pulled out my phone and had a bunch of problems. I couldn't even play it. So what I ended up doing was running through some repair programs. I was able to recover it, thank goodness. 
This is the only footage I've gotten of this really bizarre diatom. There's nematode in the muck. Well, it's a little less mucky than the last slide was, but it's really hard. There's so much mud suspended in this water sample. that's eating some other stuff that's very red. Look at that. Very colorful. See how it just moves with the muck? That motion works perfectly. Other critters have to struggle because they're stiff or blunt or whatever, and this just goes whoosh. That's why I wanted to show the muck. Coursing through the muck with no effort. That motion really works. It's the secret to their success. crazy. Trying to look for any other movement in there. I'm just seeing some diatoms again. Not seeing any significant ciliates or anything. The diatom moving through the debris here. big, beautiful golden diatoms here. Yep, we have some other movement here. What is that? Oh, just more diatoms. Nothing squishy. Oh, there's other kind of diatom here. These are long and tapered. That's a big one right there. You see how much bigger it is than the one I showed you before. Now they're both in the same frame. Very, very large. This is only... Um, what is this? Uh, this is 40 power. So these guys are quite large. Sorry, now. 100 power, my bad. So a little little obscure because of the debris, but you can see the size difference and color is similar compared to this guy. But these are much longer, like a long cigar. Very big. Uh, Paramecium B may be three quarters the length of that guy, maybe half like that. The paramecium are large, usually. What do we got here? Looks like something squishy here. What is that? Ooh, there might be something interesting here. I'm going to zoom in on that. What is that? Is that oh, just another diatom? But with all the debris moving, it looks like something squishy moving around. The 
It's a fun challenge, though, to look through all this crap. There's a big diatom there moving through there. So it gives you the impression of, um, it's like when you see bushes move in a jungle, you're like, what is that? And sometimes it's bigger than you think it is, and other times it's smaller, as the disturbance is significant. That's a huge diatom. Look at that guy. Big one. You really see the structure in this one, too. You can see the, the photosynthesizing regions there. And then you can see little circles in there, little spheres. Those are oil droplets. Those are its form of food storage. Little oil droplets in there. Uh, it may also have, it may also serve buoyancy for them. I'm not positive. Some animals use oil for buoyancy. That's what sharks do. Squalene, they don't, sharks don't have a swim bladder. So they use squalene, this extremely stinky, oily substance. Which we actually have a little bit on our earwax, which is kind of funny. The cerumen has a little bit of squalene in it. But uh, anyway, so that these oil droplets are, are uh, food storage, probably flotation. Although they can move, so they don't really need it so much. And uh, maybe I have some other purposes that I'm not aware of. But nice little spheres in there. You see those little spheres? Small little blobs. You can really see it in these big ones. Harder to see in um, some of the smaller diatoms. trailing some muck here connected to its little end piece. <laughs> it's got it's got passengers there. So yeah, pretty cool. More diatoms there, cigar shaped ones. Let's just cruise around and zoom in and see what I can see here. There's uh, another cigar like pennate diatom there. Another one there, that's the one with the little tapered bits. See the oil droplets in that one. Small oil droplets. So yeah, this is this is diatom craziness in this one. There's another blunt one that has a different shape. Long bar of uh, photosynthetic material in the middle. Another bar shaped one. That's an interesting structure there. Diatoms nearby. Yeah, that's mostly what I'm finding here. I'm not finding a lot of other stuff. The mud is being very specific this time. More diatoms there. Diatoms, diatoms, diatoms. They're everywhere. Which is good though. We like diatoms because plants are important. They create oxygen for us to breathe. Occasionally see one gobbled up by uh, an amoeba or something like that. And since they're these long, rigid objects, the amoeba will squish around and the diatoms don't break. They just they slowly digest. And they have this kind of weird things poking out in the cell. All right, let's go back to the other sample real quick because it was the best sample. And I'll put a couple quick things under the dissecting scope, low power stuff. I'm trying to squish a lot of this mud out of here so I don't cross contaminate my samples, but be a little difficult since I only have the one dropper. Hopefully that's good. I won't get so many diatoms in this sample.
cover slips. It's another container of cover slips. Sorry, I've been ignoring the chat, guys. Sorry, I just been too much. What is the muck? The muck is uh, very thin mud that is collected as the tide comes in and out. So it's very, very smooth, slippery, silty in your fingers. But under the scope, you can see it's made of all kinds of minerals and chunky bits and stuff that may even be kind of sharp to a small bodied creature. But to us, it's very smooth and slippery and slimy. So it's a mixture of uh, you know, broken down animals, minerals, various stuff you find in dirt, essentially. Um, coming in and out with the tide. Oh boy, here we are again, super crazy. This is a very, very rich pool that I got this from. Look at all those guys. Euglena and chlorella and all kinds of stuff in there. Oh, nice. I see a nice ciliate right there. We're going in. Yes. Look at that guy right in the end. See how it's squishing itself up on the end and you see the flat edge flipping up? Turn a 3D effect. It's trying to basically swim over that decaying material. And you can see how flat it is and concave. This is not a, uh... oh, another cool one there. Look at that guy. also checking out the debris looking for tasty treats well, they're together see the size comparison I don't know the names of these two I've looked them up but I've seen them before Really cool. This one, see how it's kind of spins as it swims. Even though it's a ciliate, sometimes they spin, sometimes they kind of go straight line. Can check out some other area. Another one that looks like a. Uh, there, the way it's moving. It's got the Siri, it's got that crazy thing, and you can see it's concave on one side. They actually walk like beetles on things. It's pretty cool. I love these little guys. Very fast at times, though. You gotta wait till they slow down and check out an object and crawl over it. So, pretty good off the bat. There's some more uh, diatoms in an arrangement. Next to that big guy. Oh, there's another cool boxy ciliate very fast where are you going he's in a hurry to get somewhere come on oh and joined by another one yay that one's got some cool contents and if it would slow down you'd really see it too fast this is why sometimes i put methylcellulose on the slide it's just clear mucky inert stuff they use for making slime and movies like alien and any kind of like creature movie with there's lots of slobber and slime and or movies like the blob um, it's harmless to the animals but it makes a much thicker matrix for them to swim through and it's funny because these guys are actually putting out a lot of effort already considering their scale and and how viscous water is on this small scale, they're already swimming quite a bit just to get through this stuff. But putting, putting methylcellulose down, it's a hell of a lot thicker for them to swim through, but still transparent. So for really fast specimens, sometimes I'll, I'll put methylcellulose, especially if I know they're fast specimens in the, the stuff. It's kind of hard to add it after the fact because it comes whooshing in and you have to hunt all your specimens down again. Also adds more material to the slide, so there's more material for them to swim up and down and 
making it harder to focus. But at least they're slowed down and not so crazy like this guy is. So you can study them. Also with my DSLR, um, I can shoot slow motion footage and play it back, which is fun. So you can study things that way as well. Look at this guy, it's really cool. See it flipping over? I've seen this one before where it does this behavior. The, the lip of the cell is very flexible and it's flipping up as it's trying to climb over bits of debris. I think this deserves a little more magnification. You can really see it. They have a very thick kind of central mass of the cell and the edges are very tapered thin. So it's able to kind of flip up that up the outer lip. Oh, there's another one next to it. Look at that. There's a cilia just hanging out. Long. Look at those long cilia there. Very bristly. Have to kind of contrast it a bit so you see it better. Oh, now it's going to move again. It's taking a break. So see the striations and the cilia beating like crazy. You can see the cilia better when I darken it a bit, get more contrast. Yeah, this debris is great. This is like a mini forest almost. You, you find all kinds of stuff congregating around these debris piles. There's the one that's flexible. So that lip pushes up on the edge of stuff and goes up. They're so bizarre. They move so differently compared to these other ciliates in the area. There's another. Oh, there's a. There's Euplodes right there. Hiding in the debris. See the Siri? Top and bottom. Long, spiky bits. And it eventually will try to crawl with those, like little legs. If it feels like it. It's one of my little favorites, because it's just acts so much like bigger animals, although it's a single cell. Really nice. And then this guy, this is the flexible one. You see the central mass is, is much thicker than the, the margins are, the edges. So it's able to push, now you can see curve right there. It pushes the edge of the cell up and it, tapers are so bizarre it just bends he's trying to climb over stuff right next to Euplodes for scale there you go see the kind of jerky motion it has and now it's going to try to walk on so see right now it's walking on the, the diatoms look at the Siri like little legs so cool look at it it's walking go walk just like a little beetle I never saw any ciliate do this, except for this guy. These are so fun. Look at that. Single cell beetle walking around. And when they flip over, you can see they're concave. So they have, um, definitely have uh, an unusual structure, bilateral symmetry to a certain extent. Come on, do your walking. There you go. See it turn sideways? The Siri come down. And it's walking. Almost looks like a little microscopic aphid. And back to swimming again. Just so much fun. I could watch them for hours. There's that weird one again that's flexible. Zoom out a bit on my digital because it's a little too close. There we go. Where's that flexible one again? Oh, there's Euplodes again. Hey, go walking again.
Glina action. So Eplodes is taking a break. Where's that? There's the flexible one again. Let's see what you're going to do. There you go. See that flat flip up in the front? It's very squishy. So bizarre. So bizarre. I'll do a quick focus check. I think I'm getting off. My camera's off from my actual display. seen in the camera I think no it's still off still off but no that's not bad okay that's good not bad where's that guy again I want to get some more footage of the squishy one there's a nice diatom there's that little spherical one with the little studs on the on the margins again. I have no idea what that one is. There's your floaties again. Do your walking. Just a cute little guy. See the Siri, they just kind of move around like little legs. They're, they're not beating constantly like Cilia do. They're very purposeful. the body of the cilia are going to town, but the cilia are fairly rigid. Okay, it's not walking yet. What else we got here? There's Squishy. Doing a walking. It's in the right position. Start walking, buddy. Alright, let's go look for Squishy again. Where did Squishy go? Oh, there's Euplodes right there, too. A couple of them in the area. squishy uh, there's not no need to 
walk right now. That's fine. Let's go elsewhere for a bit. When the slide starts to dry up. Let's go to the extreme edges and see what we can find. There's some more crystal forming. Look at that. It's getting all thick. So you see a lot of the mo a lot of the actions centered around these debris clusters mostly. Some independent ones swimming around, but. A lot of the good stuff is like these little micro foresty things, which is just clusters of debris where things like to hang out. Nice, there's a good one right there. See the nice striations on this one. So the cilia are on these like lines. So he's got some uh, food vacuoles going there, those little spheres. And you occasionally can see the contractile vacuole doing its business to keep the cell pressure so the water doesn't make them pop. I'm not seeing anything moving right now though. Real obvious in the um, Paramecium and stuff. I have a video of that. You can see the contractile vacuoles pumping. You can see the food vacuoles getting moved around the cell there. And you can see it's actually eaten a ciliated item that's inside the cell. See how I focus through the cell there? It captured a ciliated guy inside one of the food vacuoles there. <laughs> The, the uh, a flagellate, I, I mean, not ciliated, flagellate, see the flagellum moving crazy inside that food vacuole. So it's going to get digested. Show that ciliate a little bit better here. Let me change the uh, condenser a bit. Shows the It's on the move again, maybe. We'll see. But yeah, I like the fact that you can see the food inside still moving. You don't see that very often. So, it's inside that one food vacuole. <laughs> Too funny. Sometimes defocusing, you can see the contents a little bit better. So as the vacuoles move around inside the cell there. Is that Euglena next door doing some investigation? Pretty cool. Let's keep looking. Some more stuff to see. I'll probably make this the last slide. I gotta go do some other stuff, but uh, wanted to use these samples up while they were fresh. There's another one of those little guys. Lots of vacuoles in this one, too. Oh, look at that. It just spats them out. See that? You just saw excitosis. That little cluster right there moving to the right next to the diatom. That was just shot out of the cell. Some spent vacuoles. Very cool. Uh, there's the uh, contractile vacuole. If you look right here, there's one kind of opening and closing like it's pumping. 
That's the contractile vacuole, keeping the water balance in the cell. And this is filling up. There it goes. Almost looks like a really slow heartbeat, but it's a osmotic regulatory organ for the cell because they're salty like we are and they're in salty water but not nearly as salty as the internal cell contents are similar ocean water is similar to your cell but still more water than salt and so the the battle is to pump water out of the cell as it as it gets us well he's going crazy now <laughs> um so when this when that when the cell starts to die and that contractive vacuole starts pump stops pumping, you'll see the cell start to inflate like a balloon and lose its normal shape and get this big kind of inflated round more round shape and then eventually it will pop. And all the contents go flying everywhere. I have a bunch of videos of that on my on my channel. But so cool, you got to see uh, the uh, equivalent of a ciliate taking a dump. We got in here. Some more little single cell plants. So like chlorella probably. That little round one with the studs on the on the, uh, the outer membrane. I have no idea what that is, but you can really see the cilia going crazy on that one. It's making it do that wiggle as the cilia are I mean, the flagella are pumping away. Diatoms in the shot. More little guys swimming around. More Euglena. Yeah, another one of these guys. Not sure what that one is either. See these once in a while. Fairly nondescript, but you can see it has some color inside from some of the stuff it ate. It's pretty low contrast, so it's hard to get a good, nice shot of it. Again, I'll, I'll do a face contrast show pretty soon, so you can really see these guys pop. Nice little pointy diatom there. So this uh, diatom looks like it's been perforated and a bunch of chlorella are gathered inside of it. Let me get these centered well, because this is off. It's more like that. There we go. There's a party inside there. Those are chlorella. Certainly look like it. But they're just inside there, bouncing around. Having a little party. There's a pointy diatom going by. Another one of those little ciliates. Checking this out. A little bouquet of diatoms. these guys on the slide. I have to check them out. Another little cluster. So there's some uh, boxy diatoms there together. Next to Euglena. And all those little ciliates spinning around.
go out to the other side so I can see the whole slide. Did I already get there? Oh, here it comes. All right, let's just scan up here real quick. Lots of, this is a really good show. You glean in the high spot. More little debris forests with thingies in there. All kinds of thingies collecting. Marioglina, there's a flagella going crazy in there. Doing the wiggle. Nice view of the chloroplast in there. Again, animal chloroplast. It's a real anomaly. There are some euglena without chloroplasts that are just uh, what you call um, heterotrophs. Autotrophs make their own food, like plants and algae and these guys. And then there's some euglenoids that actually don't have chlorophyll and just capture food like all the other guys you've seen with uh, making food vacuoles. Nice little dance of the flagellum there on the, on the margin. Gotta change the exposure to see it sometimes, or the focus. Again, the uh, face contrast shows all this stuff in much greater detail. I'm gonna have to do that. Or at least more contrast so it pops from the background. There's those little flagellated guys with the little bumpy walls there. Let's look that one up. There's crossing diatoms. Actually, wait, uh, it's actually a diatom and a cyanobacterium. What else we got here? All right, I think I'll end on this shot. It's a nice little composite of euglena, diatoms, some debris, some dead diatoms. Let's zoom out here just a tad. So it looks a little bit better. So, so some diatom shells there, euglena, live diatoms. These guys are still moving a bit in here. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Anyway, thanks for everybody hanging out. It's an impromptu thing. Usually I do these at nighttime, my time, but just worked out that way I have something to do for most of the day starting about now so thanks for coming by at this unusual time and if you like this stuff keep an eye out I do them usually at night time so you probably have to catch the replay if you're in a European UK time zone it just works out better usually that way but today I had the time to do it I'll skip the dissecting scope today uh, I was just going to show some algae and lower power and some other junk but um I have to go. So thanks again, everybody. Hope you had some fun. Hope you learned something. And uh, go out there and enjoy nature. Now, you have a new appreciation for pond scum, I hope, because pond scum is actually pretty damn fascinating. It just looks disgusting on the macro level. So, but uh, that will do it. Thanks, everybody. I'll see you. Take it easy.